After a statistical analysis, you will nearly always have to do some kind of diagnostics for the results before you can trust them. In confrontative factor analysis, the most important diagnostic information is the chi-square statistic. And uh, when you have a chi-square that is significant, it indicates that the model did not reproduce the empirical correlation matrix completely. It means that the model doesn't really explain every part of the data well enough that their residuals can be attributed to chance only. So uh, in this case I estimated the same data set as in the empirical example but I specified a factor model that had some factor correlations that were constrained to be zero. And the chi-square detects that the correlations were not actually zero in the population therefore it rejects the model. So what do we do? This, it's actually very common that your chi-square statistic doesn't or rejects the model. So you can't conclude that everything is well. You have to then again understand why that occurs. So you have, we have to do some diagnostics. There are two main ways of doing diagnostics for confrontative factor analysis in an exploratory manner. So the exploratory manner means that you don't have any a prior hypothesis of what is incorrect. And the first approach is modificators and indices. I said earlier that your software could indicate that if you add an, a correlation between two error terms, then uh, that will indicate that your that will improve the fit of the model. It will make the chi-square smaller and uh, we hope non-significant. The idea of modification indices is, is that it, the computer calculates things that you could add to your model to make it better. That should not be done mindlessly. And uh, Mesquit and Lazzarini gives an, a good uh, example of how to report these modification indices. First of all, they report what's the purpose of these indices. So uh, the purpose of these indices is that you can make the model reproduce the correlation matrix better by adding something to the model. Then uh, they found, uh, then, then you explain what you do. So they, uh, they add some stuff and uh, they add some other stuff. So uh, is that justified? Well, every time when you do a change on, to your model, it has to be justified based on your theory. For example, if we have these uh, six indicators and we have a modification index that indicates that these error terms should be correlated, then we have to explain what the correlation means. For example, if we have indicators about innovativeness, indicators about productivity, we could say that, okay, yeah, this indicator also measures uh, something about personnel and this measures about something about personnel as well. So these indicators have this personnel dimension and therefore we say that their errors should be correlated. Uh, the first structural equation model course that I took, the instructor Todd Little told us that uh, when you see a modification index, then unless it gives you this kind of aha moment, then you shouldn't add anything to your model. So the modification index is only something that tells you that this is a part that you should consider. Then it's up to you to decide whether it makes sense. The idea of factor analysis model is not to reproduce the data perfectly. The idea is to have a theoretical representation of the process that could have caused your data. And it's also possible that the factor analysis simply says that no, your data don't measure the things that you, you want them, you say they, they do measure. And that's a result. So uh, every modification must be done based on theory. Another way of doing this is uh, looking at the residuals. So we have the residual correlations, which is the difference between the implied matrix and the observed correlation matrix or covariance matrix. And here is uh, here are the residuals for the full model. So there are two things that we need to check. First is the overall distribution of these residuals. Turns out that if the model is correctly specified, these residual correlations are normally distributed uh, with the mean uh, at zero. And we can see here that we have this bump here on the right hand side on the tail. So uh, that indicates misspecification. And this tail also indicates because there's a bump, it indicates that there's local misspecification. So there is, uh, there is some part of the model that is uh, 
incorrectly specified. It's mostly okay. So most of these correlations are close to zero, but there are some parts, this bump here, big bump and smaller bump, then indicate that there are parts where the model doesn't reproduce the data. Then it's up to us to look at the residuals and see where are the high values. So we can see here that uh, one block of items here, the vertical governance and horizontal governance indicators correlate much more than what the model implies. Then we have to look at the model and then think, okay, so we have an implied correlation of let's say zero. So why is it zero in the implied correlation matrix? That relates back to the, the tracing rule. So what in the model predicts the correlation? In this case, uh, I constrained these two factors to be uncorrelated and that caused these errors, the residuals to go up and it indicates the model is misspecified because they are horizontal and vertical are actually quite highly correlated. Another thing is that we, ident we can find, see that these are, these are high values also are a single indicator factor. I constrain that to be uncorrelated with, it, with other factors as well. So that way you can look at the residuals, look at what, which correlation the model doesn't explain well and then you think, okay, so why? What influences that correlates in your model? Is that part of your model correct? This requires a bit more expertise than just doing the modification indices. But the problem with the modification indices is that uh, sometimes the modification indices don't make any sense at all. And it's easier to do nonsensical decisions using the modification indices than it's using the residuals. So my the way I do diagnostics is that I usually quickly check the uh, modification indices if my model doesn't fit well and then I print out the residuals. Also it may make sense to print out a part of these residuals. So after this is a big matrix so going through it one by one is difficult but once you have identified a segment of, of the matrix where you have large values then you could fit a sub sub model. So for example we could uh, only fit the model with horizontal governance, vertical governance, and then maybe one, one other factor. So um, the way to do diagnostics is that if a full model doesn't work, then you start doing sub models. So can you get the smaller model work, drop something from the model, and then if it works, then you know that something that you dropped from the model was the, the reason why it didn't work. Then you can look at the part that you dropped or split the model into two and then do diagnostics for the first part. Once you're happy with that, then do it for the second part. Once you're happy with that, then do that for the full model. It's, it's a good idea, like in a good engineering principle is that once you have a big system and it doesn't work, start looking at individual parts and then figure out which of those parts don't work and whether they can be fixed. And only after you've verified all the parts, then you look at the whole because uh, looking at the big correlation matrix is uh, very difficult to do.